Weiss & Associates presents The FATCA Impact on American Nationals Banking Internationally. American nationals are described by the U.S. Supreme Court to be the ones who have sovereignty. The Supreme Court stated in part that, Sovereignty itself is not subject to the law, for it is the author and source of law. However, in our system, while sovereign powers are delegated to the agencies of government, sovereignty itself remains with the people, by whom and for whom all government exists and acts. The law is the definition and limitation of power. With this fact firmly established, those of us at Weiss & Associates are pro-government within the context that the national government functions within the limited sovereign powers so delegated for it to function. Some of those functions relate to issues of national defense, treaties with foreign governments, improvements in the national transportation and communication infrastructure, the providing of opportunity of immigration for select foreigners who join the Constitutional Republic, and the maintenance of the flow of goods and services for the benefit of those who created that government for the purpose of supporting the sovereignty of American nationals. This government with delegated powers was provided with a source of revenue to support its basic functions. Taxation on imports excise taxes on the manufacturers of select goods within the realm of the ATF, and the option to use direct taxation provided the adherence to the rule of apportionment per Article I, Sections 2 and 9 in the U.S. Constitution to place a one-time tax upon the various state legislatures are options should the need arise. Those who enjoy sovereignty have never been targeted as being subject to the jurisdiction or control of the very government that the sovereigns established. Sovereignty, as the author and source of law, never could retain their status if they paid taxation directly. The monarchs of European countries never paid a tax. They collected it. Similarly, the U.S. Constitution shows that no such governmental power exists. Any attempt to do so by the national government would be an act that is repugnant to the Constitution and therefore unconstitutional, as stated by the Supreme Court. American national is a non-statutory expression used to eliminate any confusion over the definition of what is commonly referred to as U.S. citizen or citizen of the United States. It means those who were born within the geographical boundaries of the Constitutional Republic, the 50 states of the Union, and includes those naturalized within the Constitutional Republic. Weiss and Associates is not and cannot be considered in any fashion to be anti-government. We support the government established by our founding fathers, whose labor has been greatly appreciated for over 250 years to keep this constitutional republic viable and enduring. Those of us living today are the beneficiaries of their intellect and inspiration bestowed on them by our Creator, the living God who established His covenant with those who know and trust Him. The IRS, via the assistance of the U.S. Department of the Treasury, expanded the Internal Revenue Code under Subtitle A in order to claim that such U.S. persons are tax cheats and evaders. The targeted audience is the holder of any United States account, which directly relates to a specified United States person defined at IRC Section 7701A30, who is a natural person and citizen of the United States, which includes both natural persons and legal fictions. As illustrated, any U.S. person has problems banking internationally. This does not apply to American nationals born in the Constitutional Republic, as you will soon see. A U.S. person means a citizen or resident of the United States, a domestic partnership, a domestic corporation, any estate, any trust within the jurisdiction of a U.S. court to exercise supervision over the administration of the trust, and one or more U.S. persons who have the authority to control all substantial decisions of the trust. The key target is the natural person. All other creations of legal fictions arise from the enterprise of those who are listed as natural persons. Thus, the essential target of what is referred to in the IRC statutes as a U.S. person is really saying that those who are, one, a citizen of the United States, or two, a resident of the United States. This is where it begins to get tricky for those international bankers their legal staff, 
and for American nationals who are exposed to FATCA's semantic gamesmanship. The expression citizen of the United States has a federal legal definition promulgated at 8 U.S.C. section 1401A, addressing citizens of the United States at birth, which states, a person born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. This definition is expanded to become clear in the American Journal of Jurisprudence, a legal encyclopedia. In this publication, you'll find stated at 3C Amger 2D section 2689, the following expression of who is born in the United States and subject to United States jurisdiction. A person is born subject to the jurisdiction of the United States for purposes of acquiring citizenship at birth if his or her birth occurs in territory over which the United States is sovereign. Recalling the 1886 Supreme Court case of Yikwo v. Hopkins, the American national is the sovereign, retains all sovereignty, and isn't subject to the law but is the author and source of law. Within these IRC statutes, we now notice the jurisdiction which is referred to as the statutory United States and see something completely different from the Yikwo case. Before we leave this section on FATCA target audience, we need to look at the IRS instructions for Form 8938. You'll find stated who must file. It's clear that, unless an exception applies, you must file Form 8938 if you're a specified person. Then the instructions state that a specified person means either a specified individual or a specified domestic entity. Now, we need to look at what the meaning of a specified individual means. The instructions for Form 8938 states that you're a specified individual if you are one of the following. 1. A U.S. citizen. 2. A resident alien of the United States. 3. A non-resident alien who makes an election to be treated as a resident alien. Or 4. A non-resident alien who is a bona fide resident of American Samoa or Puerto Rico. Those who are resident aliens of the United States are true U.S. taxpayers as they were born in a foreign country and have chosen to work in the United States. This is established by 26 CFR section 1.871-1A. Resident alien individuals are taxable the same as citizens of the United States. That is, a resident alien is taxable on income derived from all sources, including sources without the United States. Are you dazed yet by all this verbosity? Well, take a stretch and drink something cool. I'm sure you've noticed a new phrase in this discussion, a non-resident alien. We have a video on non-resident aliens, so please also view that one for a much needed insight into this semantic gamesmanship. Basically, a non-resident alien is a congressionally created substitute expression for those who are American nationals, those born in the 50 states. American nationals are not and have never been subject to the jurisdiction of the national government. They are the sovereigns who delegated some of their sovereign powers for the national government to function in those areas benefiting those who are sovereign. By now, you've noticed the expression non-resident alien individual as one listed in the specified individual section on the instructions for Form 8938. This has to be explained so as to not wander off the path created by the U.S. Congress as part of its magical mystery tour of words. The definition used by the IRC is found published in section 7701B1B as follows. An individual is a non-resident alien if such individual is neither a citizen of the United States nor a resident of the United States. Review the definition of citizen of the United States as expressed by the IRC. That's not describing you if you were born in the Constitutional Republic or naturalized therein. It also doesn't describe you as a U.S. resident alien. Hang on a little longer and the light will begin to shine. You can always replay this video in parts to double check what you've learned. In this discussion, there's been a repetitive use of the expression United States. We have to define this expression by use of a statute in the IRC or else we can be easily misled as to its real statutory definition used by those in Congress. The expression United States is defined at IRC section 7408D, and the meaning is very clear as to the geographical boundary used by Congress, where it addresses citizens and residents outside the United States as follows. 
If any citizen or resident of the United States does not reside in and does not have his principal place of business in any United States judicial district, such citizen or resident shall be treated for purposes of this section as residing in the District of Columbia. 26 CFR Section 1.871-1A taxes American nationals by the fraudulent voluntary election, permitting the national government and the IRS by conversion of your legal sovereign status to that of an involuntary indentured financial servant of the national government. This act is a direct violation of the 13th Amendment, which outlawed slavery and involuntary indentured financial servitude. This regulation, 26 CFR section 1.871-1A, reads as follows. Non-resident alien individuals are taxable only on certain income from sources within the United States and on the income described in section 864C4 from sources without the United States, which is effectively connected for the taxable year with the conduct of a trade or business in the United States. However, non-resident alien individuals may elect under section 6013G or H to be treated as U.S. residents for purposes of determining their income tax liability under chapters 1 and 24 of the code. So, American nationals are only taxed if they elect to be treated as resident aliens. Take the time to input the meanings, and that substitution will turn on the lights. Here is evidence in the expression of a statutory trade or business defined at IRC section 7701A26, where it stated, The term trade or business includes the performance of the functions of a public office. All public offices are created by Congress. The use of the word includes can only mean to consist of the entirety of the words to and simultaneously the exclusion of all other terms not so confined within the meaning of the word. Black's Law Dictionary is very clear on this when you look up the definition of the word definition. The voluntary election is not truly voluntary if you were never told about the ramifications of what the national government is doing to draw you into their territorial jurisdiction in order to impose their territorial income tax via the 16th Amendment, devoid of the adherence of the rule of apportionment. This trick has effectively been used for over a hundred years to bypass the Pollock decision so that Congress can quasi-legally tax your income that was never otherwise permitted. By the act of filing your first Form 1040, you are then statutorily perceived to be one who is subject to the territorial jurisdiction of the national government, meaning the District of Columbia, and no longer protected as a sovereign who lives in the Constitutional Republic free from direct taxation. Bottom line, an American national is not a specified individual if you're not one so identified in that list. If you've made an election to be taxed as a U.S. resident alien, this was likely done to you without full disclosure of the ramifications of making such an election. Without willful and knowing intent to sell yourself into financial bondage to the national government and relinquishing your sovereignty, then such an act by Congress could only be stated as a fraud on their part. A fraud is a crime punishable by law upon the one doing such. This is also a violation of the 13th Amendment, which outlaws involuntary indentured financial servitude. We can provide you with a methodology to permanently leave the U.S. tax club via our revocation of election and free yourself from this identifier of a non-resident alien who made an election to be taxed as a U.S. resident alien. Once you leave the U.S. tax club, it's a permanent decision and you can't ever return according to IRC Section 6013G6, only one election, which states in part, If any election under this subsection for any two individuals is terminated under paragraph 4 or 5 for any taxable year, such two individuals shall be ineligible to make an election under this subsection for any subsequent taxable year. By the use of two individuals, this has caused some confusion among the readers. One must go to the main heading of IRC section 6013G, which reads, Election to Treat Non-Resident Alien Individual as Resident of the United States. The election is the filing of a Form 1040 income tax return. The expression Non-Resident Alien Individual is referring only to American nationals, as we express it to mean those born in the Constitutional Republic. The magical mystery tour of words is a wild ride, Glad you stayed with it to the end. Our revocation of election, 
an option granted for use by all American nationals per the U.S. Congress at 26 U.S.C. Section 6013 G4A, will allow you to document that you're not a statutory U.S. person who's the main target of the FATCA statutes. There'll be no interference with any existing treaty in sovereign nationals against international bankers who have fear of being locked out of access to the conversion of fiat U.S. currency in the world markets. Thus, in context to any IRC reference to the expression United States, the meaning is only that of the District of Columbia unless specifically stated otherwise. Now, the substitution of this definition for the expression makes for a better understanding of the true nature of the IRC and what it's truly saying. FATCA targets only those who meet the definition of a U.S. person at IRC Section 7701A30, which pertains only to human targets of those who are born in federal territory, citizens of the United States, those born in the District of Columbia or a U.S. territory, those who work for the national government in some type of public office created by the U.S. Congress referred to as a statutory trade or business, or the listed legal fictions in the definition of U.S. person. If you're an American national living abroad and facing a situation where your foreign bank is reporting your income to the IRS because of the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, perhaps we can help. Please visit our website, weissparis.com where we have a wealth of free information and a library of educational videos. Just go to our resource center. You can also email us at bilateral at gmx.com. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.